All right guys, so I just got back from work and I had this thought. I've been carrying the QLS system on my Safari Lane holster for my work, but it's also been one that I've used for competition and stuff like that. And the reason why I like it is so I can go from this type of holster to a rear ALS, right? At least that's what I thought. So my job, we're obviously uh, dealing with combative people, uh, fighting, trying to grab on his stuff, along with cuffs, nightsticks, and batons. Anyways, I was sitting at work and I was like, interesting, this is my airsoft gun in here right now. So we have level four retention, one, and you have your hood, two, ALS, three, and then your holster is obviously another one. So that's three right there, all little buttons, right? And I was like, interesting. But I've seen videos of where cops have gotten their weapons taken away from them. I'm like, well, that obviously can't happen, right? Well, it can happen with level four. It just takes a lot more practice and it's a lot harder. And uh, anyways, I was like, well, what's the point of having level four retention holster? And then you have a quick release system right here, quick locking system. And it kind of defeats the purpose of having a level four if you just need to push these two simultaneously and come out. And I was like, well, that can't be too, that could be really hard or really not too hard. Well, so I put on this right here, my thought ears. Well, the QLS works really, really well. So I have attached kind of with some of my retention. And I've seen this happen to where people will just come at our holsters and grab them or try to grab the gun. Then I'll try to actually come down here and push this off and get it out. I also grab for handcuffs, magazines, pepper spray, whatever you have you. Um, so this is, it's not really a fail on the QLS. It works really well. But with any practice, and this is my second time actually trying this. So my thought is if the person is grabbing on your holster like this, and then they can push those two to intents, and then it comes out. Yeah, thumbs up. And all you do in your fingers, so even if the person is they're finding someone they're reaching over, or if you're telling another person you have poor situational awareness and they're staring at the gun, all they need to do is that. And you may be like, oh well, you're gonna be pushing down on this. Well, it only takes a slip or a miss for them to do a distractionary hit on you for them to get your entire holster out. Now also with a level four, they might be trying to fight with it, but this also becomes an improvised weapon. They can beat you with it and then finally get it out. They only need to use it immediately against you. Now, the reason why I originally went with the QLS system on this was so I could swap it back and forth from different holsters and stuff like that and put different guns on it and, you know, be cool like all the other YouTubers and stuff. Well, then I was thinking like, well, I picked it for the wrong job. So if you're going to be running this on your you know, range belt where you're just shooting static targets, you're not going to be grappling, fighting, trying to handcuff people, stuff like that, then yes, uh, it should fit your application. Or if you're a special forces and your job is to like, or SWAT and your job is to go in and neutralize a threat, right? You're not going to be fighting, detaining, stuff like that, not immediately. But if you're a law enforcement officer or if you work, I don't, I doubt corrections that even carries guns, but some do, some don't, or sheriff's office are going into jails and stuff like that. My job as a hospital security guard, we're going to be trying to do the least amount of harm to our patients as possible. So this right here defeats the level for retention that my director and all of them gave us. And that's just with me thinking about it for one minute and in that person literally just with you guys here. And that time you missed them, or I missed them. But the main thing is, is if you can go here and just push those two indents, and even if they're trying to push down, you can still hit this with your knee and come up. I mean, a lot of things happen during a fight. And so I just thought I'd bring that to everyone's attention. The QLS system works really, really well for what it's designed to do, which is designed to quickly come off. But if you're any type of criminal, or if you're dealing with any type of criminals, they they, they learn how to defeat 
you know, security systems on our retention systems on firearms, they they go over that when they're doing their best convict school ever. So what's the to stop them from learning simple grab the firearm, hold on to it, push with your middle fingers or index fingers, find those little mounts, and then you're home free with the firearm. So I'm gonna be removing this immediately off my uh, duty belt and probably just put it in my junk drawer for now. Uh, but I just wanna bring that to everyone's attention. The QLS works great, but, but if it's not cohesive to the environment you're in or to the job that you're doing, uh, it's a big fail, big fail, because this level four retention holster now becomes maybe a level two, maybe. I mean, like, you can do that in a fight no matter what. Like, people grab these cuffs and they'll, like, rip. Obviously, I've had my belt ripped and stuff like that. Safari Land, they've had these actual mounts break off on the holsters during fights. There's videos of it. Um, but this is kind of a misstep on my part or not forward thinking enough. Because I've been in the in that uh, combative type scenario enough with a firearm, and uh, I kind of missed that step. I was like, "Oh, I'll just swap it in and out, and then use different guns and stuff for when I'm not at work." But when I'm at work, I can't have this coming off at all, and that's what exactly this makes it do. So make sure that your equipment matches the the job you're going to be doing. I think Grantham said that, but I uh, just wanted to do a shout out on that and make sure that you guys are aware of that because I know law enforcement, this was designed kind of for them so they don't, so they're not, you know, coming home or going to jail and pulling out a firearm where you can possibly press the bang switch. Uh, instead, it'd be all safer in a in the holster that it all comes in. Well, you know, safety comes and goes, uh, but I believe this does not make it safer, uh, especially if you're gonna be, you know, one hand fighting a person, and on the other hand, once they're subdued, cuffing them, uh, or if you're gonna be around even, you know, if there's one bad guy, there's two bad guys, you can be fighting a guy and then this, you know, you wanna keep your firearm opposite of where you're working on an individual. Well, this is gonna be up and exposed. Guy yeah, could just come and say, hey, I'm helping or whatever and take your gun off you. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, just a quick video and that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day. So, it's not a good fail video if you don't offer advice on how to fix the problem. So, obviously Safari Land probably does not want to put a little detent like this right here. Because it slides in here, and then you can come over and push it. But that also puts your finger in front of the barrel. So, keep these two here, those two detents. But maybe change something up here to where you have a locking, like the something that you push in that comes over on top of these. Uh, rather than just sliding on top, right, like that. Boom, right? So it's locked in. Have a cap that comes over and right in there, or locks in right on top. That's what I would do. Uh, granted, I'm not an engineer, but these two, it just pushes and it releases. But if you even have something that can slide in here and lock and secure this more, they can just unlock somehow, maybe a slider or whatever. That's why I would recommend changing. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Have a great day.